On the 18th of February 2006, a world-class field of international skiers gathered in the beautiful village of Verbier, Switzerland, to compete in one of the world's premier free skiing events, the Verbier Ride. Running over four days of competition, the spectators were treated to some of the finest skiing ever seen in competition over three separate disciplines, the signature Big Mountain Free Ride, Big Air and a Freestyle Rail Jam. The ride, now in its sixth year, is the brainchild of British free skier and event director Warren Smith. Verbi Ride started six years ago, and our first year we tried to run a big mountain free ride competition. Uh, we didn't have the money for that in the end, so we just ran a big air comp. And it was, it was a really enjoyable event, but it was always our goal to create an event that was uh, eventually a world tour status free ride comp. The real breakthrough year for the Verbi Ride was in 2003. Um, we had our IFSA sanctioning to become the European Tour Finals and uh, the event went off. We managed to use the whole of the Montgelet face. Uh, it's a very exciting competition and that, that built uh, a basis for us to run the freeride competition in 2004 again. I came here last year uh, as a judge for the European Tour and uh, was just blown away with the amount of terrain. It's definitely a mecca for free skiers. People come here to ski this terrain and uh, venture out of bounds. And, challenge themselves. So in our eyes, it was really a no-brainer to want to make it a part of our world tour. The standard of riders at this year's Verbier Ride was the highest it's ever been, with skiers representing countries from all over Europe, Australasia and North America. For the men, last year's winner Ted Davenport returned to defend his crown against the might of the French riders, including three-time world champion Guerlain Chichery, Thomas Diet, Romain Raison and Olivier Maynet. For the women, current tour leader Laura Ogden and America's Jess McMillan were both looking to build on their good results from Snowbird. In the freestyle disciplines, previous winners Nick Draxel and JL Rachel returned along with Britain's top freestyler Andy Bennett while Switzerland's Audrey Fevre was looking in good form in the women's events. This year we've got Guillain Chichery coming over. Um, he's won the World Free Skiing Tour several times. He's just walked back into the picture for us and uh, always gives us such amazing skiing to watch. Really knows how to pick a line. Uh, a lot of the other Frenchmen, uh, amazing young skiers that are really pushing the progression of our sport. The Big Mountain competition takes place on two challenging rocky faces, Atlas and the Montgelet. Both faces offer plenty of exposure and cliff features, testing the skier's abilities to the limit. The Verbier Ride terrain is amazing for us. It's uh, some of the biggest, most premier terrain that, that we have on our tour. Uh, it just provides everything we look for in a Big Mountain skiing venue. The Verbier Ride is definitely one of the steepier, steeper, nastier, uh, comps out there. I think it's an excellent face with a lot of interesting lines. It's a south-facing slope and it's regularly skied out the whole time which means that you get a really good base, solid base and you don't have to worry that much about layers in the snowpack. Most of the athletes haven't actually skied the face before. You know, it's a completely different thing to look at something from a front view and then just standing it from the top and, uh, and try and suss out your line. So. Um, that's one of the real challenging aspects of the Verbier ride. Usually, there's an obvious line for me. You know, I can look up and you see just from the bottom what would really look impressive. 99% of the time you get up there and look down and it doesn't work. It's really key that uh, we have a great safety plan involved here. Our skiers are very responsible in their own actions on the mountain. Whenever a free skier checks out their line, or Hux and Cliff, there's a lot of thought and a high level of experience, many, many years of experience that go into that. I'm looking to see somebody who can ski something that they not, may not normally be comfortable with, and I want to see them ski it as if they were comfortable with it. 
So that's really a, another challenging aspect is enabling yourself to, to find the best line, but having the skill to control your speed. The first day of competition saw the big mountain qualifiers take place on the Atlar face. There was a high level of riding despite the difficult conditions, with local rider Jonas Deloyne coming in first for the men and Maria Opals first for the women. The top 20 men and the top 6 women went through to join the pre-qualified World Tour athletes in the next day's final. Big Mountain Free Skiing is one of the hardest ski disciplines to judge. A judging panel of five, drawn from senior figures in the sport, assesses the relative merits of each run on the following criteria. Line, control, technique, fluidity and aggression. Each category is marked out of 10, giving a total out of 50. The judges all agree on the line and from that point we judge them on how they skied that line. Whether they were aggressive, how fluid they were, how technically strong they looked and how in control they were. If you fall, we're going to get you on control. You're going to probably be out of the competition if you have a good fall. We want to see some amazing turns. We want to feel like we're watching a great ski movie right in front of our faces. It's a very subjective sport, so that's kind of the chess game that you play. Finding the high enough scoring line, but one that you can really flash and make look really clean and, and fun. The Big Mountain Finals Day dawned bright and clear, and the stage was set for some world-class skiing. Only a select few riders would make it through to the Super Finals the next day, and the prospect of gaining World Tour points and a share in the $10,000 prize pot provided by Ride Free Sport and event sponsors Peak Performance and Saab. In the women's race, the 20 qualifiers went out hard, and the tone was set by Kelly Holland, who rode a powerful run scoring high before attempting a final 25-footer near the bottom. She caught in the soft snow and burst out of her skis, blowing her chances of qualifying. Amélie Simon showed her trademark grace and power. Beautiful turns, a technical route and a nice shoot and drop to finish. Laura Ogden is skiing exceptionally at the moment. She's a full-on aggressive rider but smart with it and her run, though perhaps not quite her best, still secured her third on the day. Marta Lees Carlson's leg strength and exceptional balance enabled her to ride the sketchy conditions as if she was on a bed of perfect powder. Her run was super smooth, but fast and aggressive as well. Top spot went to Jess McMillan, choosing the most direct route, an extremely technical descent through a no-fall zone. A full 50 skiers lined up in the men's competition. The conditions were tough. Sketchy snow cover in places meant there was a bit of grass skiing going on through a couple of the most technical sections as previous riders had scraped the rest of the snow off. Noddy Gowans even threw in some genuine rock skiing as he slid a good portion of a cliff on the actual stone. Jonas Deloyne stomped an enormous 50-footer and Urs Baumgartner hit one of similar size but lost a ski on exit. Free skiing icon Gerlain Shishri took a route that showed all his usual imagination and creativity, but was careful and controlled as well. He took himself into fourth equal on the day, but is only 1.2 points behind the leader. <laughs> it's very good. Joining him in fourth was Aaron Estrada. Aaron went huge up top and was neat and quick through the most technical section of the slope, nailing a challenging exit route. Peak performance rider John Larson was the last man down, but still found a new route through the top section. He stayed strong and smooth through the technical middle and then somehow found a new exit route out as well. His run took him through to the super final and he was looking a serious contender for the title. In third was Craig Gabriel. His skiing was exceptionally strong and technical, keeping it fluid through the no fall zone in the midsection and riding a gnarly exit smoothly to the finish. The top two were virtually impossible to separate. Adrian Corrier chose a new start route from Startgate 2 off Skiers Left. 
His very first move was a huge drop into a seriously exposed area of the mountain. He wobbled on landing, but held on to shoot out of his exit line across to a technical middle section. He took his time, but never stopped moving, Billy goating brilliantly through an area that had left other riders sidestepping down. In the end, though, it was Frenchman Olivier Maynet who got it just right. He rode a challenging line linking super smooth fluid turns with huge drops, finishing up with a strong double drop near the bottom, before somehow skiing away from what looked like a heavy landing from his final air. As a run, it had it all. A tough route, aggression, control, great technique, but above all, bags of fluidity. On that form, he was looking very hard to beat. So, after a fantastic day's competition, it was Frenchman Olivier Maynet at the top of the men's standings, with Adrien Corrier and Craig Gabriel just behind, and former world champion Gerlain Chichery in fourth. Meanwhile, Jess McMillan headed the women from Marta Lise Carlson and Laura Ogden. It was on the rebord of the Corniche. There was 1m50, a couloir large like that, and only the cailloux. So I jumped there where there was a little bit of snow. Un petit peu en arrière, et après le turn, c'était ça le plus dur. Il fallait s'arrêter avant les cailloux. Et juste que je saute le caillou après. Et voilà quoi, super content pour une fois. Les réceptions étaient un peu bizarres, les endroits, des moments ça cassait, des moments ça cassait pas. C'était un peu, un peu bizarre, mais c'était pas mal, la face c'était pas mal. The best thing you can do is breathe slowly and deep and relax and don't think about it as a competition, think about it as out free skiing and I think that helps a lot. There was just general solid riding. There, there was a lot of exposure on certain areas which the riders held control on, so the judges were really happy from that point of view. But the disappointment from today was that Ted Davenport didn't get through. Although he rode really strong, he had a fall. But the news on Ted is that apparently he's going to base jump tomorrow, so that could be pretty, pretty sick. Ted Davenport, last champion of the Bay so the stage was set for what could be the finest day of competition in free skiing history, as the super final moved to the perilous slopes of the Montgelet. Who will be crowned Verbia Ride Big Mountain Champion for 2006? Join us after the break. Welcome back to the Verbia Ride 2006 and day three of the Big Mountain competition. For the super final, 19 men and six women assembled at the bottom of the Montgelet Ridge for the arduous hike to the top of the competition face. The Montgelet face is a very steep, very long, rocky face that you probably wouldn't want to normally ski. And um, that's exactly why it's an amazing addition to the world tour. There's three different start positions on the face of the Montgelet for the super final. Start position one, skis directly beneath it, there's a banana shaped couloir, and right to the skier's left of that, there's a no fall zone area, which is very exposed. Start position number two is from the top of the Montgelet. Again, it's a no fall zone. If an athlete falls in that area, then there's a chance they can tumble over rocks. And start position number three is a bit more of a safer zone, a bit less exposed. But directly below that, there's, uh, there's going to be an option, a cliff option, where a lot of athletes are going to try and hit. It's approximately a 50 to 55 foot cliff. In some of our venues, we have areas that we call no fall zones, which these areas are areas that we really don't want to see any ill moves at all by the competitors. If you fall in this area, we're going to really hit you hard in control. And if that happens, we can only score you so much higher than your control score. The risk factor on that mountain and the sheer and sheer size of it is just something that's you know going to humble any competitor and make them all ski very well. The super final consisted of two runs but only the top five men and three women would get a second run with their points being added to their finals day tally. As a huge crowd gathered at the Powder Spirit Bar to watch the action, last year's champion Ted Davenport launched a huge backflip from the cable car to start the competition. And so to the action. In the women's section, Marta Lise Carlson, Jess McMillan and Laura Ogden won through to the second run. 
All three displayed superb skiing skill, courageous route choice and great fluidity to impress the judges. It's like my favorite style of skiing, a little bit of exposure, uh, some good soft snow, it was pretty powdery, it was holding, it wasn't sliding out too much, and you just follow the terrain and it flows, it's like Bruce Lee. <laughs> then it was the turn of the men, and they put on a show that the huge crowd watching is unlikely to forget for a while. John Larson, who starred on finals day, was skiing strongly till he launched a huge 50-foot cliff and lost a ski, ending his chances of going through. Unfortunately, I crashed on the, on the cliff, so I started tumbling. And, yeah. Another finals day star, Adrian Corrier, was having a storming run till he too bombed out on a cliff near the bottom of the face. That left room for Canadian Matt Richard to keep it clean and smooth, surviving a scare halfway down and skiing out clean for a creditable seventh place finish. The most original line of the day belonged to American Justice Meyer, who found fresh snow all the way down and rode out an incredible rocky chute, finishing up with a huge backflip to massive cheers from the crowd. Exciting. I was honestly considering hiking back out if it wasn't going to work, but it was too cool not to ski. But the biggest cheer of the day belonged to Tom Dunbar, who skied one of the highest line scores in free skiing history. Dropping into a tiny patch of snow at the top, he continued to rip down the mountain, hitting cliff after cliff and riding out to a standing ovation. to find a line that I knew I could do but I was going to test myself so today I just wanted to finish off my run and after I landed my big air I thought I could cruise to the bottom but decided to keep going and had another pretty solid air towards the bottom. But it was the top five qualifiers who were most impressive keeping it clean and technical adding to their scores from the previous day with incredible bravery technique and strong fluid skiing. Try to find always an uh, original line and always different and uh, and uh, yeah, it's my style, it's my philosophy. <laughs> Felt great. I came for a big smear turn hip drag and uh, the powder wasn't quite as deep down here so I wasn't able to do it. Hopefully the judges don't think I was losing control. It was an intentional move. So after the super final results were in, the tables looked like this. For the women, Martelise Carlson, Jess McMillan and Laura Ogden won through to the second run, while for the men, the French dominated with Julien Guédé, Cédric Pugin, Guerlain Chichery and Olivier Maynet joining the American Craig Gabriel, with Justice Meyer unlucky to miss out. In the
the Super Super Final, Jess McMillan put in what was clearly the best run of the day for the women, skiing into and successfully out of a particularly exposed funnel shoot. Marta Lees Carlson skied strongly once again, but the final results were based on the combined total of the three finals runs, and in the end, it was Laura Ogden's consistency that won the day. The title of Verbi Ride 2006 Big Mountain Champion and a cheque for $2,000 were waiting at the bottom. Our World Tour points leader is Laura Ogden. Verbi Ride was awesome. I mean, this mountain is wonderful. It's so much fun. There's so much to do here. And the, the staff really put on an awesome event. And uh, we got great weather, great venue. Uh, Montelay is insane. It's so fun, so I had a great time. In the second run, the men again pushed themselves to the limit. Julian Gaidé, lying in fifth, was the first to go, dropping into gate number three. Cedric Poujain went next. His runs have been fast and assured all week long, relying on the fluidity and control of his skiing to score well with the judges. Gerlain Shishery rode with his signature super nimble, super fast style and managed to find route variations that no one else had spotted. Craig Gabriel was the next rider up and having landed a tricky rock shoot near the top, he caught a ski in the deep snow in an easy section and took a tumble that dropped him into fifth. Finally, it was the turn of French free skier Olivier Mainet, who had dominated right from the start. He rode smooth, strong and fast, often making extremely difficult routes look far easier than they actually are. And by the time he reached the bottom of his final descent, it was clear who was the Verbia Ride 2006 Big Mountain Champion. So it was an all-French podium with Guerlain Chichery in second and top of the world tour rankings and Cédric Poujain following up in third place. Olivier Manet! Yeah! yeah. Ça s'est super bien passé, c'était une bonne journée. J'ai réussi à skier les lignes comme je voulais, à skier vite, à ne pas faire de fautes, à bien poser tous mes sauts. Et vraiment, je suis vraiment content, j'ai réussi à skier vraiment comme j'arrive à skier chez moi, quand il n'y a pas de compète, sans pression. Donc voilà, je suis très fier et très heureux. After an epic day's competition, everyone agreed the huge crowd had seen one of the best free skiing competitions in history, and the Verbia Ride has already been signed up to be part of the IFSA World Tour for next year. I can't put my satisfaction with this competition into words. It's blown me away more than any competition I think I've ever witnessed in the sheer magnitude of all the maneuvers that I've seen done. If what we just saw today doesn't bring free skiing to the public eye and make that uh, something that the mainstream people can appreciate, I'll be absolutely shocked. People were amazing. They were absolutely amazing. They came in and they scared us as judges a lot and we didn't like being scared, but they never actually, they always proved that they had the know-how and the ability to do what they wanted to do and they did stuff that we never even would have dreamt possible. If someone who doesn't even ski saw that today, it would uh, it would blow them away and, and get them so psyched into the sport. It, watching that show today, it just shows that free skiing should be something that's adapted as a mainstream sport. The fourth day of the competition brought bright sunshine as the ride moved down the mountain to the slopes of Carrefour. A huge big air kicker and rail park had been built by Verbia residents and top British freestylers Jamie Cameron and Andy Bennett. We wanted to do something a little bit interesting and we had a natural feature in here already, the, um, the bomb drop, which is just a building that we've built a little kicker off. And then we just put the sea in the bottom because uh, it's, the sea rails just look so good, we wanted them to be right down um, next to the crowd. We got three amazing rails from Vertical. We spent ages putting them in and making sure the kickers were perfect and uh, I think it's going to be a wicked comp. The rail jam was a 40 minute jam session with the riders taking different lines through the course and going as many times as they could in the time allowed.
the end, newcomer Ross Henshaw, just 15 years old, edged out Andy Bennett and his coach Nick Draxel to take the title. For the women, Erica Edling took home first prize ahead of Audrey Fevre and Beanie Milne home. Erica! Yeah, I haven't been into so much uh, competitions, so this was nice to win this. Awesome! I can't, I can't describe it. So much fun, really good vibe, it's awesome. In the big air competition, each rider was given two attempts at the 15 meter tabletop, with the top five given a further two jumps. Throwing everything from switch sevens to rodeo fives with double grabs, the standard was incredibly high. Once again, Russ Henshaw proved too much for Andy Bennett and took his second crown of the afternoon in style. Audrey Fev triumphed in the women's event, beating Sweden's Marta Arenstedt. I had some troubles getting speed for it. It wasn't too big, it was just hard to get the speed. Russ Henshaw! The jump has a really big knuckle and a, the kicker is like a wall when you ski into it. You go into it, you go boom boom. It's really scary to hit backwards but it had to be done. Ross Henshaw, 15 years old, coming in switch. And so the curtains come down on the Verbia ride for another year, but with some of the best competition free riding ever seen and Tom Dunbar's incredible nine point line score, it will certainly be remembered for some years yet. That was by far the best Verbia ride we've ever seen. It. The audience was stoked, we had over a thousand people screaming at the, uh, at the uh, Powder Spirit Bar. Uh, the judges were actually screaming and cheering, um, and the, the level of riding was insane. Uh, the Verbia ride is the best comp I've ever been to. This venue is the best venue I've ever seen at a comp. I can't even believe they let like competitors ski this. It's a great atmosphere and as far as the mountain goes, it doesn't get any better than this, you know.